Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game for video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a blue-black rogues deck that got a ton of new additions with Zendikar Rising, although one of the cards that was already in historic with one of the anthology expansions is Una's Blackguard, one on a black for a 1-1 fairy rogue with flying, saying each other rogue creature we control enters a battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it, and whenever a creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it deals combat damage to a player, that player has to discard a card, so the black guard rewards us for playing lots of small evasive creatures. And speaking of small evasive creatures, we also get to play with two copies of Slitherblade, one mana for a 1-2 Naga Rogue that cannot be blocked, so this is perfect to combine with our Una's Black Guard, can also synergize nicely with our Thought Thief to make sure we can keep milling the opponent each turn, and then eventually also enables Zareth San the Trickster, which is one of the other payoffs for playing all these rogues, a 5 mana for 4 legendary Merfolk Rogue with Flash, and for 2 a blue and a black we can return an unblocked attacking rogue we control to its owner's hand and put Zareth on the battlefield tapped and attacking and whenever Zareth San deals combat damage to a player we may put a permanent card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under our control so an incredibly powerful ability and we've got plenty of ways to put cards in the opponent's graveyard between all our discard effects with our black guard and thought seize but we can also mill the opponent using cards like Thieves Guild's Enforcer and Soaring Thought Thief and or Merfolk Wind Robber which can all fill the opponent's graveyard so there's tons of synergy with Zareth in the deck as well. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our 1-drops where we have the full playset of Merfolk Wind Robber, 1 mana for a 1-1 Flying Rogue, and whenever the Wind Robber deals combat damage to a player, that player has to mill a card, and we can sacrifice the Wind Robber to draw a card, but we can only activate this if an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard. Then we've got our two copies of Slither Blade, not the most powerful creature, but it has enough synergy in the deck to be worth it. And then the full playset of Thieves Guild Enforcer, which is probably the most powerful one drop in the deck, as a 1 1 human rogue with flash. And when the Enforcer or another rogue enters a battlefield under our control, each opponent has to mill two cards. And as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, the Enforcer gets plus two, plus one, and has death touch. And then, of course, milling the opponent also enables a lot of the synergies in our deck, as we'll find out. And then our final one drop is Thought Seize, the powerful discard spell that lets us take a look at the opponent's hand and take away any non-land card from it at the cost of two life. And that also puts an additional card in the opponent's graveyard, which can be useful for some of our synergies. And then at two mana, we've got Soaring Thought Thief, a 1-3 human rogue with flash and flying, saying as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues we control get plus one plus oh, including the Thought Thief itself. So a nice anthem effect alongside our Una's Blackguard that will increase our pressure quite a bit. And whenever one or more rogues we control attack, each opponent mills two cards. So no matter how many rogues attack, we only mill the opponent for two, but that's still enough to increase a lot of the cards in the opponent's graveyard quickly and enable a lot of our synergies. And then we also have the full playset of Drown in the Loch, which is a very powerful card in the deck, as it can act as both a counter spell or a removal spell that looks at how many cards the opponent has in their graveyard, and then checks that with the converted mana cost of the card we're trying to counter or kill, so that's why milling the opponent is also so important. Then we've got our four copies of Una's Blackguard, and two copies of Lofty Denial to round out our counter spells, which can counter target spell unless its controller pays one, or if we control a creature with flying, counter spell unless its controller pays four instead, and there's no shortage of cheap flying creatures in the deck. And then at 3 mana, of course, we've got the full place that of Brazen Borrower. Can first use the Petty Theft Adventure for 2 mana, returning target to non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. And then afterwards, still play the 3-1 with Flash and Flying, that can only block opposing flyers. Then we also have 4 copies of Black Bloom Rogue, which is also part of our mana base, as we can potentially play it as a tap land. Otherwise, we get a 2-3 with Menace, that gets plus 3 plus 0 as long as an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard. So yet another reason to mill the opponent. And then topping off our curve, at 4 mana we've got a Rankle Master of Pranks, a 3-3 legendary fairy rogue with flying and haste, and whenever Rankle deals combat damage to a player we can choose any number of abilities. Between each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature, and all three modes could be useful, especially the fact that Rankle as haste synergizes nicely with the Unas Blackguard, as we can potentially attack and then use Rankle's ability to make the opponent's discard 
card as well as using the blank card's ability to make the opponent discard. And then of course we've got our three copies of Xanarith, which is kind of like a 4 drop in this deck as we'll often be able to use the ability to sneak Xanarith into play. And then going over the mana base, besides the four copies of Black Bloom Rogue, we also have five islands, three swamps, four of the blue black pathway, and then four drowned canacomb alongside four watery grave. So we've got a total of 12 basic land types. So the drowned canacomb comes into play untapped, which is why we don't have room for any fancy castles. Otherwise, too many of our lands will come into play tapped. And our deck is quite powerful, so we shouldn't really need a ton of castles to make the deck better. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing Omori the Collector, so it could be a Mutate or a Goblin deck. And we've got an okay hand. The Wind Robber can hopefully enable Drown in the Loch, and then we've got a Brazen Borrower for interaction. And we are indeed up against the Goblins with a turn one Prospector, so that's a scary start. Although we do get to play Enforcer, which is maybe better as a one drop here, so we can mill the opponent a little bit more and maybe enable Drown on turn two already. Another Prospector. Make it three, all right. Don't really want to trade Enforcer for Prospector here. All right, Slither Blade to draw, although we can play Wind Robber and Slither Blade here. So my Drown only counters a 2-drop at the moment, which is not enough to counter Muxus. So I think I gotta just play another creature here and then hope they don't Muxus me for a turn. I can use Brazen Borrow to maybe bounce some other creature they play. And then for now we'll just play Wind Robber, which can also keep milling the opponent. It's a bit weaker to a Goblin Chain Whirler than playing Slither Blade here. Gonna be a Goblin War Chief. That's manageable. Opponent passes. So let's see. Opponent's got four cards, so this will make it six. So we've got Drown for a potential Muxus or Krenko. And one more puts it to seven. So next turn. We should be able to have a 3-2 Death Touch Enforcer. Alright, Goblin Chieftain. I could just bounce with my Brazen Borrower. So I don't need to necessarily counter it this turn. Now they can sacrifice the Chieftain to a Prospector if I try and bounce it to fizzle the Brazen Borrower so I don't get access to the creature half. But I think that's a risk uh, I'm willing to take since I would be happy with my opponent sacrificing the Chieftain. All right, opponent cycles Gem Palm. Now Enforcer's a 3-2. But even if I bounce the Chieftain here, that uh, is not going to be enough to save my Enforcer and Cycling cannot be countered by Drown, so yeah, that happens. Opponent does not attack. I'll bounce, probably still the Chieftain here. Although the Chieftain is 2 mana to replay as opposed to the War Chief, which is 3 mana. But the Chieftain is a little scarier here. Can start by attacking. Instigator's fine. 
chieftain's not fine. Alright, opponent does have another chieftain, that's fine, we can still kill that one with drown, although we will take a bit of a beating here. So I think I'm gonna chump and sack to prevent three. Alright, Enforcers, not bad. So, how do I play this? I probably just attack with the Wind Robber. And then just keep up all my interaction. And then the Slither Blade can maybe ambush a 1 1 creature <laughs> after killing Chieftain. Lofty Denial can be a bit awkward when your opponent has Kirk Prospector in play, because that will make it so my opponent can potentially still pay the 4 mana. I think this will work out just fine. So Enforcer. Crown the Chieftain. And then ambush the two Prospectors. So we were lucky that our opponent didn't have a turn 3 Muxus. And then we were able to dodge something like a ringleader for the opponent to refuel. And now we should be in a pretty advantageous position. So probably send in Enforcer and Wind Robber. Keep Slither Blade to hold off Instigator. And then we can play Wind Robber, keep a Brazen Borrower and Lofty Denial. Now that the Prospectors are gone, the Lofty Denial also became much better. A Wily Goblin they can have. So we can flash in Brazen Borrower here. Opponent will have to sacrifice a Goblin in order to play Omori. And I think I'll let them have Omori here. Can just trade for my enforcer. Don't want to counter this and then have them top deck a Muxus to kill me. All right, so probably just attack with my evasive creatures here. I could start sacking Wind Robbers in the hopes of top decking something better, like Rankle, Zareth, maybe one of our Lords. But I uh, don't think that's really necessary. So we're hitting them for 6, so we've got a 2 turn clock. Enforcer can trade for Umori, and then we've got Lofty Denial to cover any top decks, hopefully. War Chief, so if I just counter that, it's game over. Doesn't really matter whether it resolves or not. Alright, sweet. So, close game here against Goblins. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice looking hand, double enforcer, a couple counter spells, thought thief, so we're gonna have some 3 twos and a 2 3 flyer pressuring the opponents with a ton of disruption to back them up. So we can potentially end the game pretty quickly. Huh, opponent on some sort of blue-red deck. So 
So we'll hit for one and keep up our interaction just in case and then flash in Thought Thief end of turn. Could have played it first just to mill the opponent for two additional cards, which you know in some situations can be the right call. Fireblade Charger I'll allow, I think. I mean, it is kind of annoying since it just trades for an Enforcer. So maybe I actually do want to counter this. And then next turn just go Enforcer into Thought Thief. Or just Enforcer keep up Lofty. Opponent is playing a Colossus Hammer combo deck, so that's fun. I think I'm okay tapping out here. This will ensure that uh, the Enforcers are 3-2, so I can apply a bit more pressure. And then we also get the Anthem from the Thought Thief. It does mean I'm tapped out of my counter spell for a turn, but when we have two blockers I don't think there's an easy way for my opponent to kill me, unless they've got the perfect hands. Right, Champion of Flames, they can have the one mana instant to equip Hammer to a Warrior, which would turn this into a... 13-13 Trample, but we do have some Death Touchers as well, which can still trade off for it. And now Lofty Denial can just counter the instant too. Point falls to one. And I guess we'll play a Wind Robber. Could have also sacrificed the Wind Robber main phase just to see if we could hit another Thought Thief to just end the game on the spot. But yeah, our opponent concedes. So yeah, very quick clock here with double Enforcer plus Thought Thief with a bit of counter spell backup. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn one Enforcer, turn two Thought Thief. Take it from there. Facing a Scorch Spitter. So red aggro deck. Could also decide not to play Enforcer until it gets the bonus, but I've already shocked myself with the Water Grave. And then we'll just pass a turn here, I think. Cavalcade of Calamity, I see. So, opponent is going to be playing lots of small creatures. We see Torbran in the graveyard, which also benefits from Cavalcade. And we get to flash in a Thought Thief. Zareth could be fun too. So, I don't necessarily need to play Drowned Catacomb here. I could just play the uh, Blank Bloom Rogue as a land. And then maybe just attack with the Thieves Guild Enforcer, which I'm technically fine trading for Spitter, although they're more likely to take it given that they rely on Cavalcade. Can also use Brazen Borrower to potentially bounce stuff. Opponent takes one. And then we get to keep up all our interaction here between Petty Theft and Drown. Spitfire is a scary card with Cavalcade. But we can let that resolve for now. So opponent's got six cards in the graveyard. Could steal a Torbrain, which you know is not super impressive for a blue-black rogue deck to steal. For now, probably just bounce Spitfire. And then we get to attack. And then... Good flash in Zareth. What else did we mill? More Scorch Spitters. Yeah, I guess we'll flash in Zareth. And then I lose 3 power by returning the Thief. I lose 4 power by returning the Enforcer. Probably just return the Thief.
And we didn't mill anything else that we want to get instead, so we'll just go for Torbran. Alright, so we've got all the counter spells we need. So, who's attacking here? Can send Zareth and Enforcer. Probably okay to play the Thought Thief pre combat here. Just in case I mill something else spicy that I wanna get back. Opponent takes it. And we'll go for, I guess, a uh, Clamor Shaman here. Torbrain, that's fine. So I think I just kill the Spitfire here and then we should be safe. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Lurus of the Dream Den. And yeah, we've got a pretty disruptive hand with Blackguard and Thoughtseize, so... Sometimes it's okay to keep Thoughtseize for later, but given that I have Blackguard, I want to play my rogues after it. So in this case, I'm okay Thoughtseize in turn 1, and then turn 2 Blackguard into a couple rogues. Opponent on a Black Rat. Pyromancer deck. Dreadhorde Arcanist, probably the scariest card here. Although, if I take it, then they can just claim it turn one. So, I guess I gotta take claim instead. And then turn to Blackguard, which they currently can't kill. So that's a nice way to empty their hands. Although my point will get the Arcanist in play here. It's gonna be Croxa instead. Say goodbye to Rankle. And then... I should probably just main phase the Thought Thief at this point. It does help my opponent with escaping Crocs, I guess, if I mill the opponents. So maybe I don't actually want to main phase it. And Drown is probably going to be powerful enough, even if the opponent has just a handful of cards in Graveyard. The reason to main phase Thought Thief is if my opponent would have like a shock for the Blackguard to prevent us getting a plus one counter. So I could still play it now, I suppose. So avoided milling the opponent, but did get the plus one counter on Thief. Now Drown can potentially kill Arcanists. But maybe they wanted to wait until they could protect with Village Rights. If I try and kill Pyromancer, they can still get some value. But uh, yeah. Now I get to... Smash here. Make the opponent discard. And then next turn we'll have the bonus from Thief bumping the team as well. Wanted to keep up Drown, otherwise we could have gone for a more aggressive line where we tried to uh, play Enforcer and Thought Thief to mill the opponents up to 8 cards in Graveyard right away. Might have to counter a Croxa too here, we'll see. Croxa is pretty good against our synergies here since that will exile a bunch of cards from the opponent's Graveyard. Opponent just plays Croxa, that's fine. So we'll just play another Thought Thief here, I believe. 
and discard enforcer keep drown they might go for the uh, village rights in response to the trigger yep so I mean I could counter with drown here maybe that's hmm, is it better the problem is the enforcer is not going to connect with all these elemental tokens so it wouldn't be guaranteed to make the opponent discard two cards so I think I'm better off letting it resolve and I'm flashing in the thief here so I can make the opponent discard two and get rid of enforcer which is not going to connect anyway maybe should have played the thief actually in response to the village right situation in case they picked up a shock for the blackguard Lofty Denial is nice. So we'll be milling the opponents. But we are now hitting for 11 in the air. And we've got two counter spells as backup. So can't feel too bad about it. Down to one card left in hand. If they just escape Croxa, they're still dead on board. All right, sweet, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a solid opening hand. I could thought seize turn one. Sometimes it's better to wait a turn or two to make sure the opponent has cards worth thought seizing in their hand. And I do like getting the enforcer in play early here. So we'll play it like this. All right, our opponent's playing a mill deck themselves. Featuring Ruin Crab as well. So, a few ways we can approach this. Opponent's got two cards in their graveyard. I think I wait for next turn to Thoughtseize, so I can play a 2-drop alongside it. Sadly, don't have a good attack. Otherwise, I could have considered playing Thought Thief and then attacking. But don't quite have enough cards in the opponent's graveyard. Opponent passes, we'll flash in the Thief. So five cards in Graveyard, I can make it eight by the time we attack. And let's see here, into the story. How many cards in Graveyard do I have? About to be three, maybe four. Didn't say please, Tutelage, Grow Spiral. I don't really care about any of these cards, to be honest. Maybe just take the uh, into the story here. Which is probably the most dangerous card. Counterspell is going to be bad since we're going to be ahead on board. And it's 3 mana for them to keep up. And the tutelage I could counter or we can just let resolve. And I'm pretty sure we can beat it. Yeah, I'll take the into the story here. And then we get to attack. Milthy point for 2, which is going to put them to 8. Which is just enough to turn on Enforcer and Thief. And now we're hitting them for 6 a turn. Can just use the Drown to protect my two creatures. Since we're definitely gonna kill the opponent before they manage to mill me with a Teferi's Tutelage. And when you're behind on board, counter spells aren't especially useful, so... I'm fine with my opponent getting to keep their 3 mana one. Opponent discards their counter spell. Fair enough. All right, the rogue. I can't quite play this turn if I want to keep up Drown and Loch, but we can play it next turn. Ooh, we did mill an Uro. I guess that's what the green is for, partially. So that one will probably need to counter.
We don't know for a fact that my opponent has double green here. But yeah, my opponent concedes, so... We could just uh, counter the Uro if they did escape it, hit them for 6 again. Although, yeah, I was still going to be kind of close if they could escape it again, but then by next turn we'll also have the Rogue in play, which can pressure them a bit more. So sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Lurus of the Dream Den with a keepable hand. Although the lands do come into play tapped quite a bit with Kanakum and Rogue. And we don't really have any interaction. And the Lurus decks, if it's a core Spirit Dancer deck, we do need a bit of interaction here to stand a chance, I think. So this might actually be a mulligan. Alright, this is better. So definitely keeping Thoughtseize. Brazen Borrower seems quite good too. So I have to decide between land, Zareth, or Blackguard. Blackguard gives me a nice turn to play. So maybe it's Zareth here. And then turn one I will Thought Seize. Alright, it is a Spirit Dancer deck. Opponent kept a hand without Spirit Dancer, but Glitters, Obsession, two Selfless Saviors. So Brazen Borrower is pretty decent against the Aura strategy. So what am I taking? Might just be the Curious Obsession here. Which is the cheapest of the enchantments for them to play. And if they draw more cards, it kind of offsets the discard ability from Blackguard. Now they can fizzle my Brazen Borrower adventure by sacrificing the savior, so that's kind of annoying. So we'll have to wait and see. Put on top deck the Staggering Insights. It's unfortunate. Hmm. So we know they have all that glitters in hand. It is tempting to just play Black Bloom Rogue here. Or I can just Brazen Borrower, Bound Savior. Although I won't be putting a creature in play to synergize with Blackguard anytime soon. So the plan of just playing Rogue, getting a counter on it, taking another beating from Savior might actually be better. And then we also incentivize the opponent to put more stuff on the Savior, so the Brazen Borrower Bounce is going to be more effective. Because currently the Savior can get past my Rogue. So we drop to 12. Alright, Thief was a nice draw. So Rogue can attack. Probably okay playing Thief first. We are filling the opponent's graveyard for Lurus, but that's problems for later. So here I have to decide if I want to bounce Savior now or if I let my opponent untap. Problem with letting them untap is that they could have Karmatra's Blessing. But I think I'm going to wait in case they put more stuff on the Selfless Savior here. Gonna be a Sentinel's Eyes escaped. Alright, I do have to respond to the Alsaid. And wow, my opponent just explodes at the sight of their savior getting bounced, so yeah, I mean my opponent would lose their entire enchanted creature here and they would have to start rebuilding while we make them discard with Thought Thief and Rogue hitting them with the Blackguard. So yeah, the Blackguard can be pretty demoralizing to play against. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. 
with fine hands. It's a bit creature light, so it's not going to close out the game very quickly, but it does have a ton of disruption with Thought Seize, Double Drown, and the Thief kind of enables Drown as well. Let's have a look. Alright, so Omnath, a ramp deck. Yeah, Uro is pretty rough to face as a rogue deck. Probably just taking the Leafkin Druid and then... This isn't a new Omnath, this is the old Omnath, so it could also just be an elemental synergy deck. But I'll take the Leafkin Druid to kind of slow the opponent down a little bit. Ooh, Zareth could be fun. There's Uro. All right, so we'll get in there. We do help the opponent's Uro, but we also want to maybe find some goodies that we can steal with Zareth. And then I'll just play Islands, so I have the option of flashing in Brazen Borrower. Alright, Omnath, four cards in the opponent's graveyard. Yeah, I should probably just counter it. And then we can steal it with Zareth. Another Uro. So what do I want to get? So if we get Uro, we don't get to keep the creature. We would just gain three draw card and put a land in play. Uh, Risen Reef or Omnath? Probably Omnath. Deal one to the opponents. And then if they escape Uro, we can either bounce it or maybe try and kill it. Although that will require a few additional cards in their graveyard. Opponent left the Fable Passage there, which I can still get with Zareth here. And a Leafkin Druid. Alright, so we've got a lot of options here. Opponent's got two cards in their graveyard currently. So there's a few ways I could... Uh, mill some more cards so the Drown can kill Uro. What if I just play Enforcer, mill the opponent for two, and then Drown to kill Uro, and attack with Zareth and Onath, and give them the chance to chum block with a Leafkin Druid? That seems fair enough. And then keep up my other interaction. Opponent takes it, so I can decide between getting a bit of life and drawing a card, or just getting an extra land. Don't hate the idea of just getting an extra land here. That also makes it more difficult for the opponent to escape Uro, and it synergizes with Omnath. So, yeah, I guess I can afford to take two. Potentially should have played the land first to put an extra counter on Omnath, but uh, I think we'll be fine. Alright, opponent taps out for Ugin. That's unfortunate. So, yeah. It's not like Drown would have been able to counter it since the opponent didn't have enough cards in Graveyard. Could have maybe 
dealt with a Leafkin Druid to prevent this exact scenario. So what am I doing now? Well, I guess we let it resolve. Opponents got a minus five. And then we can still kill Ugin. With Brazen Borrower here. Opponents got four cards in Graveyard. Alright, Drown isn't bad. So my opponent gets to escape Uro no matter what here, because Ugin's gonna die putting an extra card in their graveyard, so might as well play the Thief. My research has concluded. And then we have Drown, which is not gonna counter Uro, sadly, since opponent's not going to have enough cards in Graveyard for that to work. Two cards. But I can kill Uro after milling the opponent some more. So we'll attack. Four cards in Graveyard. Pass a turn. And it's going to be Omnath, a Locus of Creation. Making four mana. Into a Genesis Ultimatum. Well, looks like we're dead here. Yeah, Uro is a pretty rough card to face as the rogues deck. And a well-timed Ugin was able to clear our board when we were pretty far ahead. Any chance my opponent ends up decking? I guess I've got 12 cards remaining, so maybe that's my game plan. Although I don't see milling 12 cards here necessarily. Wind Robber also isn't active at the moment. So yeah, it's probably not gonna work. Seven cards in graveyards, not enough. Opponent attacks with all. So eight cards. If I chump chump, I'm taking eight down to one, which is not quite lethal, but I don't see me uh, milling the opponent for enough. Opponent is still going for the Risen Reef. I guess they can just try and kill me with another Omnath ping if they've got one left in the deck. Gross Parrel. Or they can just try to kill me with uh, Omnath's third trigger. 
Four cards remaining. Cavalier of Thorns. Okay. Opponent's playing with fire here. But uh, they did get a lance so they can kill me with Omnas trigger. Alright, GG's. Opponent with an empty library, but uh, sadly was able to overpower us. So yeah, the blue-black rogues deck, powerful deck in Historic. The one card that might keep it in check is Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, which of course is now banned in Standard, which is why the rogues deck might see the light of day in Standard, but maybe not so much in Historic. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.